ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, are you ready for the Lancashire Hot Pots virtual pub quiz? And here's your quiz master, Dickie Ticker. Welcome, welcome. It's Monday night. Welcome to the Lancashire Hot Pots Virtual Pub Quiz, week 17. How many weeks have you been along here for? Listen, it's the start of the week. Thank for joining us. You know what to do by now if you're a regular. Type your name in the box if you're playing along tonight. If you've got a team name, whack that in. Let us know what you're nibbling and what you're drinking and a quaffing. Uh, while you all do all that... I'm going to speak to uh, some very, very sexy, uh, slightly bearded, uh, potentially long-haired gentleman. It's Lancashire Hot Pots. First up, it's Bernard. Bernard, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hello, everybody in the multiverse. My name's Bernard and I'm from... Lancashire! Yay! Yay! Thanks for joining us tonight, Bernard. Um, let's get straight to the chase. Nibbles, drink, go. Thank you. Uh, I've gone multi-sweet. I'm going classic on the drink, Scrumpy Jack. You know how I like me scrumps. <laughs> and to assist in the sweetness, Guinness Caramel Chocolate. Oh. Oh. Caramel is leaking from her chocolate. <laughs> now, should they not be purred with a Guinness? Uh, well, you'd think so, but um, no. No. The, uh, <laughs> This is what I had in the fridge, and this is what's getting boxed off because it goes out of date tomorrow. Get it down, you know. Squaff, right. You enjoy that, Bernard, while we uh, shuffle along to uh, the next chap on the list. It's Bob. Bob, what's your name and where are you calling from? Good evening, Dickie and everybody else. My name's Bob Riggles. I'm from Lancashire. Yay! Yay. You're looking very, very summery, very Hawaiian, I might yes. add. It was it was it was tie it was one of the homeschooling lessons that we did the other week was tie dye and, and I've got it on today. Right, lovely. Uh, when I was when I, when I was at home in, in, at school and I was forced to do some homeschooling, it usually involved cleaning the bathroom or flushing out the toilet or something like that. Yet you've done tie dye. How very modern of you. Well, they, they, there have been other lessons as well. It's been a long time. It's been. A long, hard journey, as I'm sure other parents will understand. The road is long. Anyway, what have you got to take away the misery of your life uh, <laughs> for the quiz? <laughs> it's, it's not that bad, honest. Um, but we've had some celebrations this weekend. It's my youngest daughter's birthday. We've had socially distant um, kind of gatherings around the house. But we made some uh, sangria. Oh, a bit of sangria Ooh. left. Fruity. Olé, olé. Um, so there's that, and for the nibbles, we've been, we, for party food, we went to Costco. Look at the size of this bag. Look at the size. What? It's ah! oh, some as big as your head. Oh, um, so, oh, the chips. So I've done that, but I prepared them with a little bit of cheese and put oh. them in. Oh, yeah, oh, oh, it's oh, great. Well You've proper gone above nachos, and beyond. Proper nachos. Brilliant, mm. Bob. Cheers for that. I'll let you uh, tuck in while we move over to Kenny. Kenny, what's your name and where are you calling from? I do, Cockers. Ken Bowie here, and I'm from Lancashire. Yay! 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 Right, what have you got to, uh, to um, entertain the falcon with? Right, um, as eagle-eyed and eared uh, viewers may have noticed the last few weeks I have been on the brew dog um, pretty much constantly because that's pretty much all I've had left so I treated myself on Friday and did myself a magic rock order Ooh. Uh, so I have got a magic rock bio transformer um, mm. which is a double dry hot IPA and it's made with Yakima chief hops and it's an experimental hop and it's the try 2304 CR blend Blend. Yeah, not not sure I've come across the Yachimas before. Uh, reading, yeah. very, reading various bits of stuff from camera, I know that the hops tend to have some sort of like a laboratory name before they get a... Uh... Yeah, before they get like Citra or Simcoe and whatnot. Yes. I mean, it's got it's actually got Citra and Simcoe in there as well, and Mosaic. Uh, but yeah, it's got this experimental Cryo Hops Try 2304CR blend. Does that mean you could become a transformer any time during the quiz as you're drinking it? I'm hoping so. so nice yeah, to name that hop Yachima after the sound that you make if you bath. I think that's <laughs> I think that's the, the people who have actually come up with the hop. So Yachima, Yachima Chief Hops. 
decanted it. It's a bit, bit, not quite, a bit cloudy. Very piney. Oof. Resinous. Yeah, definitely, definite piney tones there. Treated myself to a t-shirt as well. Ooh, oh, very good. Who do you yeah. think you are? Let the good sounds roll. Kenny Body. And to snack on, uh, I've gone for some Happy Shopper Honey Roast Peanuts. Oh, you oh. Can't, can't go wrong with them. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Very Moorish, very Moorish. Yep, 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 yep. Great stuff. Cheers for that, KB. Uh, you no you took in to your nibbles while we go over to the Malcolm of the Multibacks himself. It's Dr. Ron. Ron, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Dr. Ron Seal and I'm from Lancashire. Yay! Every so um, I did actually spot you in Tesco's this week. So I've got yeah. a pretty good idea what you might be drinking. But let the, uh, let the viewers at home uh, know. Well, uh, yes, Dickie did uh, stop me uh, from shoplifting in Tesco this week. <laughs> uh, he spooked me. Uh, but I went with the old favourites. I've gone with, with the Punk IPA, the Brewdog. Standard. Uh, standard. Yes. Because, yeah, standard now. Uh, that's yes. my standard drink. In fact, I did have uh, some Heineken on Friday. I felt really bad on Saturday morning. And I don't feel bad off the Brewdog. No, no, no. There you go. Oh, Ron, uh, let me get this straight, Ron. Have you finished that big box of... Brewdog that we all bought. So that all gone? Well, well, I had the big box of Brewdog and I also bought 12 cans that morning that the box arrived. So I've done them 12 cans and the Brewdog and now I've bought another 12 cans. Nice. Okay, let's just give him a round of applause. He deserves that. There you go. There you go. Uh, slowly turning into an alcoholic. Uh, and also, <laughs> after, I, uh, after I saw Dickie in Tesco, I slunk, uh, slunk, slinked, whatever, over to uh, Aldi and I got myself um, some Aldi's own pop chips called Pop Outs, and as you can see, they're that nice, I've got three of them left. <laughs> <laughs> and now you've got two. Yeah. Mm. Brilliant. Great, that. Yeah. Cheers for that, Ron. Um, okay. As usual, it's 10 questions on 10 various hot pot themed topics. I was going to say they're the same as last week, but there's one slight little deviation. I'll leave that for uh, for actually within the quiz itself. Don't forget, 10 correct answers gives you 10 points. Um, don't forget, um, all you uh, new quizzers, no, uh, no answers in the box below. Just write them on your sheet and we'll toss up the scores at the end. Hot potters, are you ready? So, oh, so, yeah. Okay, everyone, let's get quizzing. Yes. Question number one. Twisting my melons, man. You talk so hip, man. You're twisting my melons, man. Of course, I'm talking about the Happy Mondays. Oh, and roses. Beth, do you want to give us a, a chuk, chuk, chuk? Chuk, 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 chuk. All right, what's going on? Chuk, 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 chuk. Thank you. Ma Manchester, Manchester. So Bez has been shaking his maracas in the Happy Mondays for many a decade now. But what I want to know this Monday night is, what is Bez's real name? Is it A, Neil Watts? Is it B, Sean Bellingham? Or is it C, Mark Berry? So Bez, the mover and the shaker from the Happy Mondays, what is Bez's real name? Because he does have a real name, a non-showbiz name. Is it A, Neil Watts, B, Sean Bellingham, or is it C, Mark Berry? See, I know this because Bez came around my flat once. And I think is, I'm going to stop you there, Bob, because what I, I don't want you to tell that anecdote throughout the quiz. What I want you to do is to put the anecdote in the Hot Pots book so we can actually monetize your memories. Oh. <laughs> in fact, that's the, uh, that's the hashtag for the book. <laughs> hashtag monetizing <laughs> memories. <laughs> I'll, I'll, tr I'll try and find a picture. For, for the end of the quiz, I've got one for my round Well, don't forget, I'll be uh, I'll be editing this tomorrow. So uh, as long as you slip it in before tomorrow morning, um, well, yes, same as everything else. That'll be super duper. Okay, that, that's question number one. Question number two is the films, and I'm going to give 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 you a quote here, and that quote is: "Her life was in their hands. Now her toe is in the mail." And that's a strap line to which 1998 film once again her life was in their hands now her toe is in the mail that's the strap line to which 1998 very popular film absolutely pointless 
Well, we know about that for you. Don't worry about it. Don't worry. I'm, I'm telling you, a big, you know, one of those Halliwell's 1000 films to watch before you die, but that, that's, that's your Christmas present. 1998. 1998 film. Your her life was in their hands. Now her toe is in the mail. Question number three is egg, sausage, chips, and beans. And this week it's beans. And Francis Bean, born in 1992, is the daughter of which famous rock star? Know this one. Francis Bean, who was born in 1992, is the daughter of which famous rock star? Well, actually, she's the daughter of two famous rock stars. Yeah, I'll, I'll in accept, a way. In a way. You know, one, maybe sort of more, though. I'll take, I'll take either. Either, either. What you know this? Two down, you don't get three points. I don't know it. You either know it or you don't. You'll so, know it when you hear it. Yeah, it's it, it's 1992, so it's you know it's it should be your your wheelhouse. She was born in 92. She was born in 1992. So if you think about how, so who who was famous as a rock star in 1992? Setting off well, your brain cells there. She wouldn't have been famous in 92 if she was born in 92. No, no she the got parents famous were famous. Parents. Rock star parents. I'll give you a clue. I'll give you a clue. One of them's Lenny Kravitz. <laughs> <laughs> now, I'll give you a clue. Midnight. One more night without sleep. No, that's not a clue at all. <laughs> Question number four is bitter lager, cider, ale, and stout. And this mm. week, it's about neither of those because it's about porter and. Oh, Mr. Porter was a famous 1937 black and white uh, English comedy film starring which uh, 40s comedy star? A. Arthur Askey, B. Will Hay, or C. George Formby? It's a, it's a very famous um, 19, um, 1930s. British comedy film, Oh Mr. Porter, who was the star of it? A. Arthur Askey, B. Will Hay, or C. George Formby? And it's a pity there's no McCartney this week because he would have enjoyed question number five, which is our crisps round, and here we go, their floaty light was the advertising strap line for which snack in the 1990s? I'll give you a clue. Was it A, Quavers? Was it B, Skips? Or was it C, Chipsticks? And the way they said it in the advert was, they're floaty light. Oh, they're floaty light. They're floaty light. So that was the strap line for which snack that you could buy from the news agents in the 90s? Was it A, the Quavers, B, the Skips, or C, the Chipsticks. Apparently would have well got that. Easy. It would have done. Yeah. I had a bag of chips, uh, Chipsticks the weekend, and um, they're, they're still quite strong, aren't they? Oh yeah, they, they don't they don't they don't back off on the S and V. No messing about at all. Question number six. It's about a band you might have heard of. They're the Lancashire Hot Pots. Oh, and when the Lancashire Hot Pots played Glastonbury in 2011, headlining the Croissant Nerf stage at 11.30 at night, a certain young upstart called Ed Sheeran was supporting us at 2.30 in the afternoon. Now, between the Hot Pots and Ed Sheeran, there were several bands in between us. Now... Two of these bands were on the bill between us, but one of them I've just made up. So which Wowzers. is the band that I've made up? You'll have to get your radar on this. Is it A, the Chris Reese Band, B, the Rory McLeod Band, or C, the Larry Minetti Band? So A lot of bands on, wasn't there? A lot of people who were bands. 
Yeah. Yeah, it's. Um, I, I think um, in terms of that particular, you know, acoustic-y, faustic-y, uh, faustic-y? faustic-y, yeah, faustic-y, yeah, yeah, I like that. Yes, uh, that's the combination of folk and acoustic. Copyright, I think, copyright, I think, Dicky I think, I think Merry Hell are quite a, a faustic-y band. One of the best stickies, as we call them in the trade. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, yes, a lot of them are uh, singer-songwriter-led. And one of these definitely wasn't on the bill with us at Glastonbury that day. But was it A, the Chris Reese Band, B, the Rory McLeod Band, or C, the Larry Manetti Band? Mm. Question number seven is a deviation from our usual quiz questions because question number seven is I Fear Ikea. <gasps> Tasty, tasty, very, very tasty. Competitive eater Takuru Kobayashi broke a world record by eating how many IKEA meatballs in 60 seconds? Was it A, 19 IKEA meatballs, B, 29 IKEA meatballs, or C, 39 IKEA meatballs? So how many IKEA meatballs could you eat in a minute, but how many could a competitive eater eat in 60 seconds? A, 19 meatballs. B, 29 meatballs. Or C, 39 meatballs. What dost thou reckon? Be great those meatballs as well. Really nice. I'll, I'll, take, I'll take your word, I've never, never had the pleasure being a vegetable tarian. <clears throat> Although, uh, um, I think um, out of all the, the vegetarian meatballs I've had, I think this Sainsbury's do some quite nice ones. They're about the... Uh, Tesco do some good ones, and uh, I think Bird's Eye have just started a range, so that's my three uh, best buys uh, for vegetarian meatballs. Dickie, have you ever had those uh, lamb and mint crisps? <laughs> <laughs> Only uh, the Brannigan's ones, of course. <laughs> Question number eight is Everyone Loves a Bernard, and of course we do. And this week it's musician and producer Bernard Butler. Going to run out of Bernard soon, but until then we carry on. Now, Mr Butler was lead guitarist in Suede, helping them record some of their biggest singles. But what year did Bernard leave Suede? Was it A, 1994, B, 1995, or C, 1996? A few 90s questions hmm. in the bag this week. So Bernard Butler was the original lead guitarist in Suede, but he'd left quite early on and apparently he's gone on record to say that he does sort of regret jumping ship now. But what year did he leave the band? Was it A, 1994, B, 1995, or C, 1996? I'm just going to change my answer though because... Oh. oh, come on, Bob, you always go with your first answer. Well, you just say quite the word quite early on, so... Mm. Oh, no, I mean, sort of quite early on in their... Well, you know, they've been going since... They've been going nearly, uh, you know, 20-odd years now. Question number nine is, as always, our television round. And I want to know which famous children's entertainer voices Sean the Sheep? Oh. Oh. Ah. I'll give you a clue. It's not... Floella Benjamin. I didn't realise Sean the Sheep had a voice. I thought it was... It's like... It's like... Ooh, ah, mm. eh. You know, stuff like that. But yes, a famous children's entertainer voices, or, you know, provides the... Mm. The sounds for Sean. Which famous <clears throat> children's presenter is it? Children's presenter or children's entertainer? Well, they entertain and they present... That's all I'll say. Oh, I it's not Brian Kant either. Ah! Let me put him down, so it's all right. 
And question number 10 is our potluck round. It's either a yes or a no. It's a true or a false. And ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to posit the following suggestion to you. In 1989, Michael Jackson made a TV series where he travelled the world sampling the best beers. Is that true or is that false? In 1989, Michael Jackson made a TV series where he travelled the world sampling the best beers around the world. But is that statement true or is that false? What do you think? Which Michael Jackson? Oh. oh, now then. Are we talking the Michael Jackson? Stop it, you're fishing for clues. I'm not giving it all Sorry, you're, you're, breaking up, you're breaking up there, Bob. Can't quite hit you. You had to go in your network, it, you? your network bandwidth is low. It's, <laughs> it's breaking up. Those, ladies and gentlemen, are your 10 questions for this Monday evening. How well did you do? You probably used a lot of brain power, so why not, you know, refresh? with uh, a little bit of a drinky winky and a nibbly wibbly. I'm on the uh, the Brewdog Pale Ale this evening. So cheers, everyone. Happy Monday, indeed. We had an air cut as well, boss. Oh. oh, you're looking pretty sharp. Oh, I, 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 know, I noticed. No, I had one. Yeah, Bob's had, what? Yeah. Bob's had his, uh, his ears lowered as well. Yeah, mine did mine. Where's that hurt? Not only, have, not only have I still not been able to get to third dressers, but uh, I've not been able to get to the razor either. There's, Comment there's more... below what you think of the full face. There's more hair on your chin than there is on the top of your head at the moment. There's not uh, more hair on my chin than there is on my back, though, unfortunately. <laughs> we need to mark some sheets now. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what everyone's got. Mine were all guesses, to be honest. I think I, I'm going to go out there. I reckon I've got four. You reckon? I'm yeah, rooting I for so. you, Bernard. I'm rooting for you. I want I'm, more than anybody. I want you to win. Come on. So, question number one was music, and we we're talking Bez from Happy Mondays. And I wanted to know what Bez's real name was. Was it A. Neil Watts, B. Sean Bellingham, or C. Mark Berry? Bernard. Just working on the uh, the old school. Put a Y or a Z on some on the end of somebody's name. I've gone with. Mark Berry. Mark Berry. Okay, Bob? Uh, yes, I found the photo. There he is. There he, he is. He, he, he came around my flat late one evening. He uh, 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 no, he, no, he can't say anymore. Hashtag monetise memories. Monetise yeah. memories. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and of course, you know, we hung out all night. We're, we're best buds. His name is Mark Berry. Okay, Kenny? As you know, I am terrible with names. Um, <laughs> I wasn't really sure for that reason, but I guessed uh, Mark Berry because I don't know that one just stood out the most. But yeah, now okay. that Bob said it and Bernard's um, theory behind it seems reasonable. And finally, Ron. Full House, Mark Berry. It is indeed C, Mark Berry. Well done, everyone. We're all off the We're box. We're off the mark. We're off the mark. Yes. He's a very nice chap. That, that's not, I won't give it, but he was a very nice man. Very good, very good, yes. Uh, question number two is films, and I said uh, her life was in their hands, now her toe is in the mail, was the strapline to which 1998 film? Now, we know Bernard's seen a lot of films. Um, <laughs> have you seen any with toes in? Absolutely not. Oh! <laughs> oh. No. You might have given the game away, but thank you for, for that particular suggestion. Yes. Bob? Cheers, thank you. Mm. Um, I, I, yeah, I, I didn't know. I just put you've got mail. <laughs> you've got mail. Well, well that's, <laughs> yeah, that, that could be you've got mail too. Yeah. You know, yeah. that, it could well be. Uh, Kenny? Uh, yeah, I didn't know. Um, now that Bernard's obviously spoiled it, I know I've definitely got the answer wrong, but I went seven, which I think is a, a bit earlier than... Um, 98 anyway. Well, it, it still features something being chopped off, so it, well, it, it's in the right ballpark. Imagine the end scene if there was a toe in that box. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Spoilers. Or, or, or a dead hamster. And Ron? Uh, one of my favourite films, The Big Lebowski. Uh, yes, Bernard's give the game away. It is The Big Lebowski. Well done if you got that at home. It's one of the only films I have went out and purchased because uh, I just liked it. So you do know more about films than you let on. 
Well, no, it, I, I know about that one. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, it's something to build on. It's a, it's a firm foundation, that's all I'll say. Question three was Exos's Chips and Beans, and Francis Bean, who was born in 1992, is the daughter of which famous rock star? Bernard, now you, you were struggling at first. Did anything come to your 1992 rock stars? No, no, I was busy looking for the Big Lebowski DVD, so I didn't, ah, right. really, listen. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't really listen to the question. Peak too soon. So just wrote down the words, Mr Bean. Mr Bean, OK, <laughs> fair, well, <laughs> there is a sort of logic in that. Uh, I think Bob might be uh, more on the money for this one. Yeah, it's uh, the rock star couple of the 90s, Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love. Oh, yeah, well, that, that, that's potentially correct, Kenny. Yeah, I'm pretty confident it's um, Kurt and Courtney. In fact, it wasn't. I'm sure there was an Nirvana song that mentions, like, possibly even in the title, um, her name. Uh, and finally, Ron. Uh, Kurt Cobain and Courtney Love. Yes, you, you could have had either of those. It was either Kurt Cobain or Courtney Love. And I think um, the song that you were referring to was on like the montage of Heck album, which is like a, a collection of B-sides and, and demos yeah. and things. And her name was Francis Bean. Francis Bean. Yeah. Wow. Francis Bean what? Um, Cobain. Cobain. Oh, right, OK. Francis Bean swimming. <laughs> Francis Bean the chipper. <laughs> um, question number four was bitter, lager, cider, ale, stout and porter. And old oh, Mr Porter was a 1937 classic British black and white comedy starring which classic British... Um, black and white comedy star A. Arthur Asky, B. Will Hay, or C. George Fonby. Um, Bernard, what did you think? I thought that Arthur Asky was a fellow off the fast show who said words me washboard. Didn't know the fellow in B, so I went George Fonby. George Fonbo, okay. Uh, Bob? Yes, having ties with George Fonby ourselves in a way, um, I, had to, I had to go with George Fonby. The Fonbo. Uh, Kenny? Complete guess, George Formby. All oh, right, and Ron? Uh, I went Arthur Askey. Well, you're all wrong because the answer is B, Will <laughs> Hay. Can't believe you didn't get that, Will Hay, the classic... Well, Hay. ...British comedy man. Oh, you'll be kicking yourself. I, I, might, I might insert a bit here. What are you talking about? Listen, the train's an hour late. How can it be coming now? It's summertime. Summertime? <laughs> the old fool's potty. Summertime or wintertime, if a train's late, it's late. Yeah, that's right. It's like you put the clock forward. And that was, that was funny back then. That's that was, was funny, that was funny yes, yes. Um, should, we, should we try and redo that, or...? Uh, we, we, could, we could do it. In fact, um, Harry Anfield once did a, a parody of it a, in one of his TV specials where he was called Will Silly, which was brilliantly observed, but if you, if you didn't know Will Hay, then you probably wouldn't get it. Look, now, this is a jelly knife. It's a sad now that's to say, this is a jelly diet. Right, now where's the charge? What's the charge? <laughs> Rubbing a bank. But never mind, on to a probably more firm and stable ground as we talk about crisps for question number five. And their floaty light was the advertising strap line for which snack in the 90s? A quavers, B skips, C chip sticks. Bernard? B skips. Skip, you've gone for the skips, Bob. Yeah, I went for skips as well. OK, Kenny. Yeah, before you read the answers out, I was quite confident it was Skips, but afterwards, I'm now thinking, oh, was it Quavers? But I'm sticking with my original answer, so Skips. Skips. And Ron? Skips. Uh, no, you're all wrong on that one. It's, it's Quavers. Hey, Quavers. You can't uh, get a floatier uh, light crisp than the Quaver. Yeah, <laughs> see, that time I shouldn't have stuck with my original answer. Yeah. I might I might even insert a bit of the, the advert here. Quavers. Oh, the floaty light. So question number six is the Lancashire Hot Pots referring back to our 2011 appearance at the Glastonbury Festival. Us and Ed Sheeran, apparently he did something daft like about 20 different um, uh, stages when he played that year. Just greedy, isn't it? Greedy. But it's about all the other bands that could have played. Between us and him, um, there were several other bands. Here's two of them. One of them I just made up. So which one is it? A, the Chris Reese Band. B, the Rory McLeod Band. Or C, the Larry Manetti Band. So, Bernard, what does your Glastonbury radar tell you on this one? I went for the one that sounds like Rice Krispies. Chris Reese. 
Chris Reese. Uh, Bob? Now, I, I do believe you shared um, a picture of the, of the lineup recently, and I think I yes. shared it. Uh, but as my memory is awful, uh, I start to guess, really. But I just thought, mm, Rory McLeod, was it Rory? No, Rory McLeod. Rory McLeod. Um, Rory McLeod, the Spinetti, they sound like flamboyant kind of people who'd have bands. I didn't think Chris Reese would have a band. Oh, Chris Reese is uh, proving quite popular. Kenny? You know, Chris Reese was the one that stood out to me as the one that I did kind of remember. So I couldn't make my mind up between B and C, so I've just gone C. There's a bit of a semi guess, but I'm pretty confident I remember Chris Reese, okay. which is quite funny because I never remember names. You're not a good name rememberer. No. Um, Ron, what does your uh, radar tell you? Well, I never played Glastonbury. Uh, <laughs> I've only just joined a band. Uh, but uh, I went with uh, the only one that sounded made up to me, which was Rory McLeod. Okay, uh, interesting answers from everyone, and uh, you know, answers across the board. Uh, the person who didn't play Glastonbury between us and Ed Sheeran, uh, because I've just made this band up, is C, the Larry Manetti band, and Larry Manetti played the original uh, Rick in Magnum PI. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Calling back to an earlier quiz. Yeah, I, I, I got confused though because it sounded a bit like Jack Savaretti. So you've done well there. Yes. Yes, I, I, th- I thought it was, a, you know, it, it's the sort of th- thing that you might see, uh, uh, you know, at a smaller stage in the uh, uh, the, the, the smoky uh, testicles tent at Beat Herder. That sounds like it. Laddie Manetti's on at 3.30. Uh, question number seven, I fear Ikea. And in 2004, competitive eater Takoru Kobayashi broke a world record by eating how many IKEA meatballs in just a minute? A19, B29, or C39? Bernard, how many IKEA meatballs do you think you could eat in a minute? That's not what the question's for. I've gone for the question that is the answer to the question that you asked, which I think is one every two seconds ish. 29. 29. Okay, thanks for that, Bob. How many do you you think you could do? I believe I've used this logic before. Uh, 19 doesn't seem enough. 39, probably a bit too much. Yeah, two a second. 29. 29. Oh, yeah, when you think about it, yeah, that is is two a second. One every every two seconds. Yes, yes, yes. That's what I meant. Uh, Kenny. Yeah, I was torn between that logic of, yeah, two a second, boom, boom, boom. But then... If you're doing two a second and you're not chewing, that you're not going to feel very well. So <laughs> I, I thought I'd be go on the conservative side and go with 19. Erring on the side of caution. And Ron? Well, uh, obviously I've had some uh, IKEA meatballs and I can confirm that they're very small and I reckon I could get quite a few balls in my mouth. So I went for 39. <laughs> <laughs> the, the correct answer, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> is... <laughs> B, 29 oh, meatballs. Oh, One every two seconds. Yes. yes. Good well, old Takoru. Good old Takoru. Well done to yeah, him. I well think done competitive to eating, you're not supposed to enjoy the experience. No, no. You, you, feeling ill is just a part of the game, isn't it? Yeah. Part yeah. of the course. Yeah. Question I've been number eight. A, lot of, uh, a lot of beard meats food having uh, yeah. started to grow this beard. And... Uh, I've got a good grip now on competitive eating. I can see what I can do. Question eight is everyone loves a Bernard, and we're talking about Bernard Butler from the Swade, but what year did he leave Swade? Was it A, 1994, B, 1995, or C, 1996? Do you have any Swade albums in your uh, collection, Bernard? No, but I do have a, a bit of a knowledge of the music thing. So I know that he left in 96 to uh, then have a little break to go on to do the Seahorses and then he got into the producing and he did Duffy's album. Right, well, th- thank you for your uh, Melody Makers slash NME style um, music historian uh, style facts. Uh, Bob, what do you reckon? Wasn't the Seahorses John Squire from the Stone Road? Yes, it was, yeah. yes. Yeah, it might have been, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely pointless. Um, so I originally put 1996, but then changed your mind and went a year early in 95. 1995. Now, I, I think Kenny's quite a good um, knowledge of 90s uh, indie Britpop rock. So yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm hoping I'm, accurate things from Kenny here. I'm not, I'm not confident, but I'm pretty sure he did Dogman Star and he didn't do Coming Up. 
So it was... I've, I've gone 94. I've just gone with my first answer, 94. I don't know whether it's 94. Kenny, might be 95. Kenny, what, what year did he do um, Yes with David McCormick? Because that'll tell us... That was later on, wasn't it? About, ni- about 97, maybe? Yeah, that was like late 90s. Mm, so mm. did he leave later and go straight on to do that? Well, well I, it, it depends on whether coming up was 96 or 97. If it was 96, I reckon he, I'm right. And if it was 97, I reckon it's 95. But I can't remember when coming up came out, whether it was 96 or 97. Well, let's get an answer from Ron and we can put this bad boy to bed. Ron, what do you think? Oh, you... Well, I went, I went on the logic of McCallum and Butler being 97, so I went 96. The answer, tension, ladies and gentlemen. Can anybody knows this stuff? It's A, 1994! Didn't Kenny put 95? No, I was going to no. put 95 if oh. coming up was 97, but I think Dogman Star was 94 and coming up was 96, and he would have left just after doing Dogman Star, and they would have started coming up before 96. So, yeah, that's that was my logic. Do I get half a point for thinking about the wrong man? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> no, our wives do that all the time. <laughs> <laughs> you, get, you, get a pat on, you get a pat on the head. Well done, well done, well done. Uh, Question number nine, TV, and I wanted to know which famous children's presenter slash entertainer voices or provides the the bars for Sean the Sheep. Bernard, you've 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 watched a lot of children's entertainment, you know, these past sort of nine years or so. So you're well versed in the the CBBC CITV world. What do you think? Um, I think that the people at Ardman would have just gone for something a little more classic. And because whenever anybody says children's entertainer slash presenter, I'm haunted by the image of this man from a naked Channel 5 game show, I just went with Keith Chegwin. You went with the Cheggers, right? The classic Chegwin. Uh, Bob? Um, I, I um, actually have a personal friend as a um, CBBS presenter, Alex Winters, and I know it's not him. Um, and this is a while ago, isn't it, Sean Sheep? It's a while ago. Uh, Farmageddon, the, the Farmageddon latest movie was, was, new, yeah. was last year. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Oh. Well, well, maybe I've done a, a whoopsie. And I put Dave Benson Phillips. <laughs> 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 Can't go wrong just, just by putting Dave Benson Phillips for anything. I, I was invited to his wedding and didn't go. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Kenny. See, now you're laughing, but when you first read the question out, I didn't know either, and the first name that came to mind was Dave Benson Phillips. <laughs> and I was going to put Dave Benson Phillips as well, but then when you did the impression and you gave us that little bit more information about him being a presenter and an entertainer, the only person that came to mind, and I don't know his real name, so I don't know if you'll let me have this, if it is right, is Mr Tumble. OK, thank, oh. you, for, thank you for that submission. And Ron? Uh, rule of thumb is if Dave Benson Phillips invites you to his wedding, you go because ultimately, at some point, he's going to get his own back. <laughs> <laughs> Thank there you very much indeed. Uh, I went with the only children's entertainer I know and someone who would actually credibly make these noises. And I went old school and I went with Mallet. I went the Tim Mallet. Mallet. Oh, right. very good. Yes. Yeah. I of see, course. I see. Of course. Correct, correct answer, ladies and gentlemen, is Justin Fletcher, aka Mr. Tumble. Oh, well done, so Kenny. well done, Kenny. Am I, have, well am I allowed Kenny. that one? You are. You are allowed because I put Justin Fletcher, aka Mr. Tumble. So if you've got Sorry. either of those at home, yeah, you're onto a winner for that. Well one. done, Kenny. That's a well, top it, answer. That, it, was, yeah, it was that's... Dickie's. It was Dickie's um, impression that a big green tick made it twig. And question number 10 was Potluck, and I said, uh, in 1989, Michael Jackson made a TV series where he travelled the world sampling the best beers. True or false? Um, yeah, you know, it's, it, it's, a, it's a question with, with many potential avenues and further questions to add on to that. Uh, but, uh, Bernard, what did you think to that? True or false? I just... Before you did all the stuff about different Michaels, I just like the idea of him going from bar to bar going, <laughs> it's fantastic! So I went true. True? Oh, you, you, you like the, the idea of that particular premise. Bob? True. Um, true. Yeah, I originally put false, and then I uh, give the game away and probably give everybody else a clue. Um, it was Michael Jackson, but perhaps not the Michael Jackson, the moonwalking Michael Jackson, not that one. 
Um, so it must. It's A. Michael Jackson. A. True. Oh, right. A. Okay, Kenny. <laughs> Now, yeah, Bob gave it away. There is an actual Michael Jackson who's pretty big in the beer world. And in fact, I think he played a little bit of a part in the Brewdog story because I think when they first started doing their own beers, um, they managed to get their beers to him. And he tried them and he was like, yeah, quit your day jobs. These are really good. So um, I don't know whether he's done a TV series or not, but I know there's a Michael Jackson in the beer world. True. Okay, true. And Ron? I was initially going uh, to go false, but then Bob kind of gave the game away, and I went true. Da, and Bob has given the game away. Of course, it is true, of course, but it's not the singery Michael Jackson. It's the famous beer writer Michael Jackson. I shall stick a photo of him here, uh, who sadly died in two thousand and seven. Uh, that, um, that series was on Channel Four called The Beer Hunter. For that was that Michael Jackson's. Um, name tag in the beer world so those got that wrong then with the um, the brew dog thing i don't know i'll have a look no well you know it depends um they might have you know they might have just been doing some uh some early home brews and and the yeah. like so it could have been so those are your 10 answers to your 10 questions tonight total up everything uh, that you got right put your score in the box below so we can see how many uh, points that you got tonight and you can see whether you've beaten your favorite hot pot so now then let's do the scores and find out the uh, the totals from all our favorite hot pots ourselves bernard what score did you get for week 17 they don't call me nostra bernard for nothing <laughs> I said at the start I'd get four, and would you, Adam and Ebit? I've got four! Wonderful, wonderful. That's uh, fabuloso. Uh, Bob, scores. Yes, yeah, didn't have such a good week for me this week. I got the same as Bernard, four on ten. Oh, so four on ten. It is quite exciting. Kenny? Uh, did a little bit better than you have done lately. I got six. Six oh, on ten. Off. Top knock. So the only one who might be able to topple you now is Ron. Ron, what score did you get? Well, believe it or not, I got four. No. Four, oh, three fours. But with an outstanding score of six this week, Kenny is the winner of this week's quiz. Thank you. Thank you. So you, you've notched another one back there, to, searing up towards uh, uh, Bob's big total. I'm going to have to get on the I Love Port website this week and swat up. <laughs> yes. Oh, yeah. There was there was no uh, love pork questions, right, gentlemen? That's a um, that's another splendid Monday night to uh, start off start off the week. Thanks everybody for watching and watching um, past the Coronation Street point, which is uh, and not basically what happens is you get to half seven and then you just get a little bit of a drop off when, when you go. I'm not watching this anymore. I'm watching Coronation Street. So if you stuck out to the end, well done, well done. Don't forget to put your scores down just so we know um, how much you got. And basically, A, thanks for playing. Thanks for sticking with us. And, um, oh, it's Monday night now. And if you're, well, basically, be around on Saturday afternoon. We'll be trailing this later on in the week, but we've got a um, Saturday afternoon. We've got some very exciting surprises for you, beaming live from a secret location covered in AstroTurf. But there'll be more of that later in the week. Oh, Thanks for joining us. Time. Thanks for joining us this Monday night. We'll see you soon. Have a good week. Cheers now. Ta-da. 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 Ta-da.